What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today's video will be about Windows Privilege Escalation. Specifically, we're going to talk about Uncoded Service Path technique. Now, Uncoded Service Path, it means that this, the service binary path lacks double quotes. Let's find out how can we uh, achieve or how can we exploit Uncoded Service Path. First, we have to uncover it. We're going to find out if it exists on the Windows system. The first thing we're going to do is to enumerate the services we can enumerate the services either using partial or the command prompt it doesn't matter it's up to you once we find the right service or else we enumerate the services we want to look for the vulnerable service what are the characteristics of a vulnerable service the first thing is um, or the I'm not gonna call it vulnerable characteristic I'm gonna call it desirable characteristic the first one is auto so auto means that the service start mode is set to auto it means when the system restarts it will automatically restart the service or it will automatically start the service that is desirable because sometimes in order to exploit the service we're gonna have to restart it and uh, during or in some cases you don't have the permissions to restart the service so in that case you won't be able to conduct or achieve privilege escalation that's why we start only or we start all the time with the services where the start mode is auto next we look for spaces in the service binary path spaces are like this as you can see this example is as an example of service binary path see windows program this is a uh, space here program space files test space sw test this is a path that contains spaces now the problem is if the path doesn't have double quotes if there are no double quotes it means that we can attempt exploiting uncoated service path the path is uncoated and have and has spaces how can we do this so basically the first thing we have to create a payload and place it in a strategic location the location should be or should come before the service original executable we always aim to place the payload in a location that comes before the test so why do we do that we want windows to execute our payload so what happens when the path is uncoated how the service starts so when the service let's call it test okay starts this the system will start looking for the executable in that case the name is h e s t okay that's the name I give it it's just random um, so how it finds this executable it will start here C Windows program and there is a space here so when the Windows encounters a space it will look if there is an executable name such as prog.exe okay that's the weakness okay because there is a space it will look for other executables based on the names if it finds program .exe, it will execute it although it is not set to be the service executable yet because of the space and because there are no double quotes windows will execute program all right everything is fine let's assume that there is no program .exe executable it will continue to the other path here and here it finds test space sw so in that case it will look for test.exe if it finds that it will treat it as the executable or the service executable fine let's assume everything is fine no test executable here then lastly it will jump to the service executable that's if you are lucky but if you are not lucky and there was an attacker who knows about this weakness in your system they will technically create a payload and place it either under this directory or this directory based on the permissions that's one the next thing it will or they will name the payload to be either prog or test okay and that's how we achieve exploitation and based on the user running the the, the uh, service we will get shell as that user that's how or that's why we also um, look for another desirable characteristic in the services where the user is local system Okay, that's how we achieve privilege escalation now let's go to the practical scenario and demonstrate this in action
Okay, so we close this one. Our s this is our scenario today. It is from TryHackMe. The room name is Uncoded and it is created for the demonstration of Uncoded Service Path in Windows. Given the credentials, we're going to connect and attempt to obtain the flag. All right, so now we're given access to the Windows. Now assume that we have somehow compromised the Windows system, right? And now we want to conduct privilege escalation. The first step is to find out who we are. So first, who am I? And we are THM Cotent Sage. Let's find out about the privileges we own or we have. Say shut down privilege, change notified privilege, increase working set privilege. All these pr pr privileges are fine. All right. So next we check out the groups. So we are part of RDP users. That's how we were able to RDP to the machine. We are part of users as well and a couple other groups. Okay. Now, since we're talking about uncoded service path, Let's go over the first step, which is service enumeration. Let's go over all the services that we have, list the start mode, the path name, all of the information. So WMIC, service, get name, path name, display name, start mode. This will give a hell of an output, as you can see. As you can see, we got a lot of services, right? An example would be, this is the service touch keyboard and handwriting panel service. This is the binary path. <coughs> and this is the start mode. It is manual. We don't want this. Okay. And as you can see, this is the binary path. It doesn't have spaces in the path, right? So we want to filter these out. Let's go down and filter only for services that starts automatically. So find string slash i string yeah without the i slash i auto <clears throat> as you can see now we only get the list of the surfaces where the auto start or the set or the start mode is auto couple of others a couple of uh, only not only a bit of services have slipped away and they are manual no problem <coughs> But most of the services here are, as you can see, auto. Okay, this is fine. Now, most of the time, <clears throat> when we look for a vulnerable service, we want to find a path that does have spaces. So we're going to filter C windows, okay? Because C windows is the path that doesn't have spaces. Let's filter this out, or let's rule it out. So start mode. Okay, and from here we can also type find string slash i slash v and we filter the path so we copy c windows as you can see we got only three services now all of them are outside c windows c program files this is desirable as you can see why because we have spaces but as you can see, this path is coated. So we have no chance bugging this path. Also, this path is coated. No chance to take advantage of this. However, this path does have spaces here and here. And it is uncoated. So this is the perfect example or the perfect candidate for Windows privilege escalation. Okay, one thing to note is that the service executable name is service.exe. So basically, we can create now a payload. It's optional if you want to name it development, dev service, or service. But basically, we aim always to um, name the payload to be exactly the same as of the service executable. So let's now jump to the machine and create a payload. So development, 
we want to first find out actually we, we forgot one step we want to find out what is the directory that we have got right access to so we want to find a directory where we have got right access so basically let's first use icox and start with c program files development files that's the first location where we can think of placing an executable all right let's take a look now so going up so we are part of users okay as you can see we have the inherit we can read execute we can generic read generic write and other permissions are inherited which means we can write to this directory let's examine this one Let's see here. So users again they inherit the permissions. So let's now create a payload and we can name it either development or dev service. Let's go for dev service. So coming back to the commands here, we're gonna name the payload dev service. And don't forget to specify the uh, type file type exe server servers executable and then we have the IP address and the port actually the IP address is the same so no idea why things started to you know what? You you know the word, right? I don't need to say it. Oh my goodness! What happened, man? The great payload took ages to be created. So we got an error access denied. Okay, let's try to just download this to some other other location. Okay, so we have the service executable or the payload is here. Now I'm gonna go back to the user itself. And we're going to to copy this back to program files development files and we're going to place this here so here we're going to read the administrator permission the location of the service we're going to copy that and then we go back to the path Hmm. How about here? Okay, so here it worked. So we have the executable now in dev services. Okay, so now we're going to go back to my machine and make sure that the listener is running. And we're going to need <coughs> to restart the machine in order to trigger the service. So here, issue restart planned continue and at the end guys as you can see we received the shell so now we navigate to the administrator <coughs> desktop to retrieve the flag see what it is what's black on the administrator's desktop fine so cd c users And this is the flag.
<coughs> Let's go ahead and put it here. So that was it guys, I hope you find that helpful and I will definitely see you in the next video.